Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Baron Von Zom's Dice of the Undead by Kurzweiler. I hope I said that right. Uh, age of seven and up, two to four players, and roughly 40 minutes to play. And in the game, Baron Von Zom's Dice of the Undead, you are working with Baron Von Zom, and you're one of his minions, and you're trying to create an Aether Gate portal to the land of the living to uh, fill the bellies of many undead souls. Yep, that's, that's the theme of the game, is creating a portal so that your zombies can eat people's brains. So you're basically going to be utilizing dice. You'll be rolling dice in a Yahtzee-like style to try and create and complete this portal here before any of the other minions do to gain Baron Von Zom's favor. If you can complete the portal, you're going to actually score yourself a brain point. And then depending on the number of players in the game and how far you want the game to go, whoever has the most brains or gets to the certain number of brains at the end of the game is the winner. There's some unique little things like cards that you'll be utilizing or if you're able to roll some straights to get bonus abilities. We'll talk about those as we go along though, let's go ahead and talk about the setup of the game, how to play, and of course my review. Setting up the game, Baron Von Zom's Dice of the Undead is quite simple, and what you're going to do is based on the number of players playing the game, there's a certain number of dice required that are going to be in play. You're basically going to get less dice in the pool if you have less players, but I'm doing a four player game so just add all the dice. Each player is going to get a player board, they're going to get one of these little wheels here with numbers on them, and they're going to have dice in the middle of the pool here. Uh, green cards that are shuffled up and red cards that are shuffled up. Set aside the brain tokens somewhere to the side as well as the die roller to the side. And then that's pretty much it. Everybody's got their little board in front of them and their little dial. Let's go ahead and get into the game. To begin play for Baron Von Zom's Dice of the Undead, the first thing you do is you choose a first player. And the way you do that is you ask who is the most recent player to have a little bit of brains. If not brains, then perhaps just the player who most recently literally ate anything. And that player would be me. In this instance, I'll go ahead and take a green card and reveal it for the round, which means up until somebody fills in their cogwheel, this is the rule for the round. And this one here says that after three rolls, if you still didn't place any die, you get an extra roll. So normally you get three rolls in this game. In this case, you can get four, but only if you failed all the other three rolls. Uh, from there, I have my cogwheel. I'm gonna go ahead and pick three dice. I can take any combination of three dice available. There are red, yellow, and blue dice. And I'll just go ahead and take three blue dice. And now I'm gonna play Yahtzee. I'm gonna roll these dice and I'm gonna try and find doubles. I'll roll once, twice, three times. If I don't roll any dice, typically speaking, then I'll have to pass. However, with this new rule, I can actually roll again. In this case here, I happen to roll two twos. So I can place these die on my outside cogwheel here. It has actually little spaces for die with the colors in the die spots. So I can place these and I'll have to place them in a corner um, that fit together. So the two blue dice uh, must be placed that are twos in the blue area here. Then I'll go ahead and take my, my wheel here with numbers on it and I'll assign the number value to correspond with the two blue dice. It has to fit into this little pizza slice. And this is going to designate now where I can place dice and what numbers they need to be. I can place a blue and a red three. I can place two red fours, a red and a yellow five, so on and so forth around the circle. Now that I've placed my doubles, I can actually play the game normally. This is kind of like to get into the game. So this die will actually go back to the middle here and I'll pass to the next player. And in order to get into the game to place your cogwheel, which is really important, you're going to need to roll doubles. So we'll just for the sake of argument say that each player was able to roll doubles on their first turn, which is not always the case, but uh, this will kind of get us into the game. Otherwise, the only player who's going to get to play is the player who has rolled doubles or players who have rolled doubles. And boards can pretty much look like anything as long as you have the colored dice in the colored section along with the cogwheel of the number that matches in that area as well. And so that's going to have to differentiate each round. So, okay, I've got my cogwheels now. So now it's back to my turn. Everybody rolled doubles and I now once again get to choose three dice. I'll go ahead and choose, well, as you can see, I have to place adjacent to the two dice I previously placed. And in this case, I have two blues and they're both twos. So that means I need either a three that's a blue or a one that's a blue. Those are my only options based on the board that I made. So I'm gonna actually have to take three blue dice again. Uh, and once these blue dices are filled, I'll never need blue dice again. And I'm gonna roll for Yahtzee again. I'm gonna roll to try and get these numbers that I need. And I'll roll, and if I get any of the numbers that I need, I can place them in. Otherwise, I'll have to re-roll. 
and I didn't get anything here. We'll go for the third time. Six and two fives. Nope, I need a one and a three. Uh, I got a three here, so I would place it in here. After I've placed all my dice and rolled my three times, and in this case here I get to roll four, but I did place a die, I'm now going to have to give up my dice. I can only give my dice up to players who have actually, uh, uh, I can only give dice up to players once everybody has filled their boards up with at least a pair. And I can look to see who needs a blue five or a blue two. And I'll check the board. It has to be able to match just the same rules as me. They have to place adjacent on the corresponding uh, circle area. And in these cases here, this player is looking for a four and a six that's blue. This player here is looking for a four and a two that is red. So none of these guys are going to need these two dice. And so I'll put them back. However, if they did need these dice, let's just say that I had a four that was blue, I would actually have to give this to the player who needs it. If there's a tie, I would actually get to choose who. And so your extra dice that are rolled that are not utilized must be given, or if not given, they have to be discarded. Another thing to note too when rolling dice, if you ever happen to roll triples, meaning that I chose three blue dice, and I in fact rolled three threes on one of my rolls, a triple three, I'm actually going to stop my rolls, even if it's my first, second, or third roll. And I'll have to draw a red card, and I'll have to do what the red card says. If, however, instead of rolling that, a, a triple of some sort, I roll a straight, a one, two, and a three. Now I have the actual choice. I can draw a red card, or I can use the dice to place or roll again. So triples force you, and the uh, straights allow you to choose. Red cards have 16 good cards, and then the rest are potentially good or potentially bad. So most of the time you'd like to reuse them, specifically if you're behind in the game. And I'll have some various things, I'll tell you what they do in my review. But otherwise, that's how the game goes. You roll your three, you place, you pass the dice if you need to, discard them, and the next player gets to go until somebody fills their game board. When somebody fills their game, their little circle wheel, to open the portal of the undead, you'll get a brain. And then from there, you'll discard all the dice, remove all the wheels, and have the next player in clockwise order begin, and then you'll play the game. If you're feeling frisky, you can roll the dice in this little dice roller here, and go ahead and start the new round with a new green card, changing the rules of the game. Yep, it's a simple little family party game. Let's talk about it. Dice of the Undead is, like I said, a party family game. Your objective is to roll dice, assign them once you roll a double, and then continue rolling dice from turn to turn, trying to fill your board in based on the color and the die number associated with the, each, each portion of these, this wheel here. Being able to kind of get some unique tricks up your sleeve when you're behind by taking these red cards is super useful, and the fact that each game can play differently with these green cards coming up from round to round is a lot of fun. It's a random luck-based game. There is luck mitigation, and you can actually kind of change up how your play style is by what, you, what dice you choose. There are def definitely choices in this game, and cho choices do matter. Um, if I know a player is going out, they have their board filled except for a red two, I know that if I have any other colors other than red, I probably should be playing those colors um, because I'm giving the opportunity for that player to win. Or maybe I should be going for a straight or a three of a kind to draw a card to push me ahead for a victory. Allowing other players to roll dice on your behalf is actually pretty smart. Checking to see which way they're building their, their color wheel and leaving your color open for the other colors on the table. If I know that yellow is the most um, unused color right now, I should leave my yellow as well. I don't want to give them any benefits from me while they still have those colors left over. There's been many a game I played with this game where players will progress the game and cover up all of their red, all of their red, and all of their red, and I'll leave my red in hopes that they'll give me three extra dice, and so I can choose one path or the other. Now, there's limitations, being able to only go one way or the other, uh, but the cards do change that. We'll talk about a few of the different red cards in the game and what you can expect. Place the die from the supply with the correct numbers on empty spaces of the green segment of your player board. So you just get to fill up green spaces, that's nice. Place three yellow dice from the supply on empty die spaces on your player board. Roll a die, all players including you may take dice of this value from the supply and place them on their player board unless the green card prohibits a player from doing so. Placing three blue dice on your three blue spaces, if they're not already filled, fill the ones or the twos on your player board with dice from the supply. So these are just giving you additional free dice from the supply. Um, and there's a bunch of variety of cards that help you in some way. However, there's other cards that say, like, if you don't have a brain yet, you receive one as a gift and the game continues as normal. So just straight up giving you a victory point. Some of these are extremely powerful. 
or swapping your player board with another player, but you don't swap your brains. So there's a bunch of random things that can show up in this game. And of course, there are also additional rules and variants for the game. Place two ones, two twos, and two threes on your player board as a starting pair. So you just get to fill up your board halfway through. The game just goes quicker. Um, or place dice anywhere on your player board, not just next to already placed dice. This already applies to dice received from other players. Wow, so you just fill your board up however you want. You just break the rules completely. Uh, always play with three dice of the same color until there are fewer than three dice left of a color you still need. If you roll straight, you must draw a red card. So now instead of just triples drawing you and then straights letting you choose, straights force you to draw as well. And it goes on from there. So these are ways in which the game will change with the rules. And so each experience is gonna be a little different how you come across with it. It's a quick game, it's a fun game. It's one of those games where if you like a Yahtzee game, if you wanna get fa your family members from like more casual based games like Yahtzee, or they're familiar with that, um, then this is a game where they can jump in on as well. I know my grandma could easily play this game. She was a big Yahtzee fanatic for a while and played it quite profusely. And this game doesn't change a whole lot. It just adds some extra action cards, modernizes the style of it, and gives you a kind of unique feeling for the game of Yahtzee, which feels kind of solo, and this plays with other players, more interactive, which I think is more fun. Quality of the game. It's excellent. I really, really like the player boards. I like the double thickness. I love the fact that you can add the color wheel to the board game and being allowed to choose how you make your wheel is also nice. The dice are your standard Amazon style dice, yellow, red, blue. They're fine. They work for the need to work. Uh, this rolling cup is nice. I like it. It's got the nice felt inside and it looks leathery. Like it's like some type of pleathery, I suppose. Um, and all the tokens are like triple thick. I always like triple thick tokens. Comes with this big bag where I guess you can put all the components if you'd like. And then, Additionally, which is kind of nice and not nice for me as much, but the cards, they come with a bunch of extra cards for a bunch of extra languages. So in my copy of the game, at least, you have the English on one side, and then when you rotate it, you've got, I think it's like Spanish. And then there's another card set that is for like German and French or something. There's actually a whole nother, a whole nother pack of cards that you can have different. So there's various languages all provided within the same game. And then you have the rule books, uh, English, et cetera, et cetera. So if, uh, can't, don't, if you, you know, your family doesn't speak English, then they can actually go ahead and do the American Spanish one. They can actually read and understand what the card says, which is you know, kind of cool. Um, but also kind of distracting if you don't speak any other languages like me. Overall though, it's a solid, fun, family-friendly party game. It's got this, the modernized style classic Yahtzee attached with the new style of games that have been more modernized uh, for the gaming community that add a little bit more choice and variation, that add a little bit more uh, working together even, even if it's unintentionally giving players the option to pass certain players' dice to fill up their game boards. It's quick, it's fun, I like the artwork, the style, it's a cute game, and if you're looking for a game like this, then you should just Go ahead and pick it up. There's a link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Baron Von Zom's Dice of the Undead by Kurz... Kurzweiler. I hope I'm saying that right. It's Kurzweiler.com. Uh, I want to see the rest of their games if they have any more games there. A link will be in the description for all this. Uh, you can also go to the subscribe button. It's a really wonderful little place. It's on the bottom of the screen over here. Hit that subscribe button and bell notification. If you like our videos and want to see more videos that we create more down the line in the future, we do create about three or four videos a week and we have a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST and we play it on all the platforms, Twitch, YouTube, X, and Facebook. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to taking a trip with you to Baron Von Zahn's to create a portal of the undead to assault the living and eat their brains next time.